Beat Studio Buds Plus absolutely nail it in a few key areas, call quality, sound quality, and fit. But they're also missing tons of features, especially taking into consideration their retail price of 169 US dollars. So are they still worth it in 2024? Should you just grab the AirPods Pro or the Beats Fit Pro or another earbud? Well, today I'm gonna lay out all the information to make it nice and easy for you to decide. Now, if you do get these, the transparent option is the way to go. It's just a refreshing look. I test tons of earbuds, so it's nice to see something different. Now, this transparent design carries over to the earbuds and the actual design is quite interesting. The ergonomics look a bit strange, but they fit me perfectly. It's just one of those random situations where the ergonomics just work for my ears. I use the largest ear tips. You get four sizes and I have pretty large ears, but the comfort for me is great. They have minimal suction and pressure, not as light of a feel as say the AirPods Pro or Beats Fit Pro, but they do get Get pretty close. What's more impressive though is how secure the fit is when I'm weight training, any kind of exercise, going for a run, I'm barely having to readjust the earbuds. So they're staying a lot better than the AirPods Pro and actually staying more securely than the Beats Fit Pro for me. I personally find I don't need a wingtip though. You might. So because of this and the sound quality, the Studio Buds Plus are now one of my go-to training earbuds. And if you like using your earbuds when training, the earbuds themselves have an IPX4 water resistant rating. Fine for sweat and use in the rain, you just can't submerge the buds in water. Now the battery life here isn't too bad, six hours with the earbuds, 24 hours in total, that's with noise cancelling on. With noise cancelling off, nine hours with the buds, 36 hours in total. Chuck the buds in the case of five minutes, you're gonna get one hour of playback. And the case itself is pretty thin, not as thin or compact as the AirPods Pro case. And they do have slightly more total battery life at 30 hours, but you're getting more style with the Studio Buds Plus here. So I've currently got them tied first in terms of case design with a nothing year two. But you are missing out on wireless charging here for the price these are at, it really should have been there. They do make up for this with their controls though. They use a physical button, but the placement of that button is at the top of the earbud. So when you press it in, the earbud doesn't dig into your ear canal at all. So a very smart design. And out of the box, you can control everything except for volume. If you wanna add volume control, you have to sacrifice your noise canceling and transparency controls since you can only add that on the long hold. And that's the only customization that you get. A workaround here though is just using the always on Siri. Now you aren't getting any wearing detection here. Another feature that should really be here at the price. Plenty of buds out there, even under a hundred bucks that have wearing detection. But unlike the AirPods Pro, if you want to customize the controls and other features, you can also do this on Android in the Beats app. There's a very minimal amount of customization, but you get the options like seamless switching and find my device. Now with the connectivity here, you don't get any high resolution codecs, which is fine. If you want to use one earbud while you leave the other in the case, that works fine. And when you are using one earbud, it will work in mono mode. So you hear the left and right audio channel in the one earbud. Now my quick test on my iPhone 15 Pro, the gaming latency was pretty solid. Here are my detailed results I got in my test on iOS and Android. 400 milliseconds is fine for casual gaming. You wanna get closer to 200 milliseconds if you're into fast reaction games like shooters. Now another missing feature here is multi-point connection to connect two devices to the earbuds at the same time. Now on iOS, you get seamless switching between iOS devices and you also get this on Android. I was only able to test it on iOS and at least for me, it doesn't seamlessly switch which my AirPods Pro and Beats Fit Pro do. So it'll connect to all my devices, but I have to manually connect to the earbuds every time. Where with the other two, I'll just play music and it'll automatically connect. Continuing on with connectivity, I had one random occurrence when I was just going for a walk outside and one of the earbuds started to distort, make a weird kind of popping sound. But then I chucked them back in the case, took them out, and it hasn't happened again since, but I thought I'd mention it. Now, one area where the Studio Buds Plus are just the best I've tested is when it comes to core quality, specifically blocking out noise, whether it be road noise, kids screaming, intense wind, it just completely cuts out all the sound. I recently did a comparison video comparing 15 of the best earbuds when it comes to core quality and the Studio Buds Plus came out on top. Much better than the AirPods Pro 2 and Beats Fit Pro. But here are some samples so you can hear how well it blocks out this background noise. All right, so now we're gonna test the ability for the microphones to block out some kids' noise. All right, here is the call quality of the AirPods Pro 2. All right, here's the call quality of the Beats Studio Buds Plus. All right, so now I've got some construction noise being played in the near distance, crowd noise being played on my MacBook Pro. I've got my trusty fan here to simulate some wind noise. All right, here's the call quality of the AirPods Pro 2. There's some wind noise, some crowd noise, and some very loud construction noise. All right, here's the call quality of the Beats Studio Buds Plus with some construction, some crowd noise and some wind noise. 
All right, now let's talk about the noise canceling here. First, how I test my noise canceling. I chuck on my soundbar and I'm playing simulation plane noise and crowd noise. I'm getting high, middle, low, consistent and inconsistent sounds. And here's my noise canceling ranking with all the earbuds that I've tested. I've got the Studio Buds Plus in the tired eighth spot alongside with a few other earbuds as well as the Beats Fit Pro there. The AirPods Pro 2 are in the fourth spot. Even though it's a high ranking, it's honestly not a huge difference between the AirPods Pro 2 and the Studio Buds Plus. The AirPods Pro 2 are about five to 10% stronger. So super impressive noise canceling on the Studio Buds Plus. Now there is a slight amount of EQ shift. That's how your sound quality changes with noise canceling on compared to off compared to transparency. Thankfully, when you go from noise canceling on to transparency, there's not much of a difference at all, which will probably be the two main options that you use. When you turn noise canceling off, all I noticed was about a 5% increase in the bass. So nothing major. Now the transparency mode here is solid, not on the level of the AirPods Pro. The Beats Fit Pro also slightly better, but this is still up there with the best transparency mode. It's natural and it's just easy to hear conversations and your surroundings. The noise cancelling or transparency doesn't have any wind noise reduction though. So this is when the microphones will pick up wind and will kind of block it out, but thankfully it doesn't pick up too much wind, even if it's quite a windy day. But where the AirPods Pro have a massive advantage is with their adaptive sound controls. It's kind of like an enhanced transparency mode where it'll pick up sounds and block it out and kind of blend the transparency mode and noise cancelling together. I found it very useful walking in like a really loud city with busy road noise. Even at home, I'll just turn the kettle on or the blender and it kind of blocks out that sound. So with whatever I'm listening to, I can still hear what I'm listening to. Beats Fit Pro and Studio Buds Plus, you don't get this. You also don't get a hearing test to customize the noise cancelling strength to how you hear. This is the same with the AirPods Pro and Beats Fit Pro though. So you got buds from Soundcore, OnePlus, Nothing, that all have a hearing test to customize not only the noise cancelling, but also the sound quality. And a lot of those pairs are cheaper than the Studio Buds Plus. But honestly, those hearing tests don't make a massive difference. Like I'm talking like it'll make a couple of percent improvement. All right, now let's talk about sound quality. First, let's quickly touch up on volume. If you're looking for loud level listening, these are the loudest earbuds that I've ever tested. The previous loudest were the OnePlus Buds Pro 2. I got 118 decibels out of them. The Studio Buds Plus, I got just over 123 decibels. So if you want your loud listening, you're all good here. Thankfully, they also sound good at those low volumes. So I'm talking about the first one, two, three, four clicks of volume. You still hear a nice amount of bass and treble at those low volumes. I say it's pretty much on par with how the AirPods Pro 2 sound. Now these advertisers, they use spatial audio, but it's not gonna be the same as what you get on the AirPods Pro 2 and the Beats Fit Pro, where they'll have head tracking and you're also able to turn the spatial audio on at any time. Where with the Studio Buds Plus, it's only gonna turn on if you're listening to like music or a movie that's using Dolby Atmos. Now the sound itself, we're getting advertised powerful, but balanced sound, and that's exactly what you're getting. So you get some slight bass boosting here, but it's a nice balance of both sub bass and mid bass. It's a nice amount that's gonna work with any type of music and it doesn't bleed into the other frequencies. It's definitely not bloated. It's got some good punch to it, but it hits in hard when it's needed. The mid range is boosted nicely here. So vocals, both male and female come across very clear, but still natural. So it's not too forced. You get excellent treble detail as well. It's boosted to a point where it never gets harsh, even at high volumes. My only complaint is the upper treble is slightly lacking. So so it has a bit of sparkle, but I personally like a little bit more. It depends on what you like, honestly. But still the instrument separation here, the way it's tuned, some of the best you can get at this price. And the sound stage here is pretty solid. You get quite an open sound, but it's definitely not a standout aspect of the tuning. So overall, it's one of my favorite balanced tunings, but you still get a nice amount of energy with the bass. And like I said, they sound great at low volumes. If you crank them a little bit higher, you still get that nice rich bass response and clean sound. And the tuning is quite similar to the AirPods Pro 2. I do prefer the Beats Studio Buds Plus. I find the bass and treble is just a bit richer. I also prefer it over the Beats Fit Pro. I find the tuning on the Beats Fit Pro is kind of more mid and sub bass focus, which is great when exercising. It's kind of what they're designed for. So the Beats Fit Pro have slightly more sub bass, but I found the treble just a little bit lacking on them. A massive issue for the sound on all three pairs here though, is that you get no EQ customization. So you're stuck with the sound. Thankfully, I like the sound without even having to EQ it, but you'd have to use an external EQ if you want to change the sound. All right, now let's break down if these are gonna be worth it for you. For most people, I'd say it's probably not worth it because you're missing out on a ton of features. Full controls, multi-point, sound and control customization, wireless charging and wearing detection. If you want all that, I'd recommend going for something like the Nothing E2. That's my number one pick right now. Sound is also pretty similar. Call quality is pretty close. Even pairs from Soundcore like the Liberty 4, Liberty 4 NC, OnePlus Buds Pro 2, Google Pixel Buds Pro, all similarly priced. And on most of them, you're getting all those extra features. But I got to give it to the Studio Buds Plus. They nail it when it comes to the fit, 
noise cancelling strength, and sound quality. Those are my three most important factors, which is why they're now one of my go-to training earbuds. They just nail it with all three. And the core quality is gonna be another big selling point, especially when it comes to blocking out noise. But the Liberty 4 and Nothing E2 are pretty close in terms of core quality. And you are getting those Apple ecosystem features, even though the seamless switching just didn't work for me for some reason. So in that case, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, I still think the AirPods Pro 2 are the better value earbud, even though they are slightly more expensive. The core quality is pretty bad on them though. So if you wanna see how all the core quality samples compare in my top 15 video, check it out right here. In the meantime, stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.